Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me down. Before I start, I just want to congratulate um, East Ayrshire for the day today. I think it's really refreshing to see this type of uh, forum. I've been working in local government, helping them to change the way they deliver frontline services for over 10 years. And I'm constantly disappointed by the sort of siloed approach to working, especially around IT projects and change. It's normally the IT, it's normally the department that's screaming the loudest or has the most pain, where they'll go to IT and they'll start working on a, a pilot and roll it out. Meanwhile, other teams, other areas of the department, other parts of the business are doing similar things. So it's really refreshing to see you all working together, have this opportunity to share ideas. And I really think you should try and embrace it and, and make the most of the day, because it doesn't happen everywhere. So you should be credited for, for having this day really today. Um, I've been asked just to spend 10 minutes telling you a little bit about Total Mobile, but more importantly, um, about a very specific part of the digital um, transformation strategy, and that's mobile working and um, scheduling, uh, workforce scheduling. As I say, I've been working with Total Mobile for over 10 years, based in Scotland, and um, what I want to do today is just introduce you to some of our customers, how they're using mobile working technology, shed workforce scheduling technologies to transform the way, the way they deliver frontline services. So it's the people out in the field dealing with your uh, citizens that, that, that I'm here to talk about. I'm going to introduce you to who they are, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and hopefully at the end just give you a few uh, case studies of the sorts of savings and talk about money again and, 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 and the benefits they're achieving from this. Firstly, who are Total Mobile? We've been around providing... Um, uh, applications, software applications to local government for over 30 years. We, until 2013, were named as Concilium Technologies and we used to have our own back office systems, but more and more our customers were coming to us with mobile issues, mobile problems. So in 2013, we changed our name to Total Mobile to reflect the fact that's really where we're focusing on. I put up a few names of, the cust of some of the customers that we have here in Scotland. Um, and I'm very happy to spend some time talking to you individually or as groups about the sorts of things we're doing with these customers. It's worth noting that there are generally two different approaches to, to, to mobile working um, from, from our customers. We have, that says two at the top, but it should actually say three. We have three customers now in Scotland that we regard as enterprise customers. And what I mean by that is they're using one solution, one mobile working solution, or one scheduling suits solution to, dip, to um, provide internal solutions for every business area that they have within the council. And um, what I mean by that, it's field-based workers, people out in the field doing, doing work. So that could be from the very um, high volumes of uh, uh, users such as social work, home care, responsive repairs, domiciliary care, regulatory services, environmental services, right down to the very small departments, such as pest control. We've even got local authorities who are beginning to use mobile working for their graveyard inspections, memorial inspections, these type of people. No longer does the size of the business area dictate whether you can afford to have a solution. It shouldn't be about that. It's about getting people out in the field and try to get them working more effectively. We also have a number of partners. One of them is in the room today, which you'll be hearing from a little bit later, but that's, just, that's more the marketing stuff. So I'll get past that quickly. You've all probably seen these screens before. You've all certainly heard it a few times here today. It's, it's unavoidable. The demand for your frontline services is only going one way. And that's a good thing. People, is, people are living longer. There's a larger population. Unfortunately, we all know that the budgets that you have in place are, are, are not there, are not growing to the same degree. In fact, we all know they're decreasing. So you have an option. Lots of options, in fact. You can look to try and cut the services that you provide your frontline um, citizens, which we don't think is the best way of doing things. The other option is look to try to do more with less. Try to make your existing frontline staff more efficient. And that's the way that we think that uh, you should be working. I don't, well, I think we all know, or have all thought about why mobile working is, is um, important to local authorities and, and, and the sorts of things it can do to help start to change the way you're delivering frontline services. I've put up here just a few examples. Um, 
an increase in productivity is, is a crucial one. If you look at the traditional way in which people used to receive jobs, they'd come into the office, often go to, to their case management system, print out large case notes, put them in a briefcase, drive out to see their, their first service user of the day, sit down with them, spend their time, fill in an assessment, fill in it, um, catching new information about them, driving back to the office, updating that into the call back office system. That's not really an effective use of time. If you can provide that information, the right information that they require to do their jobs in a more secure, safe, efficient manner, then they can capture that information in a real-time environment using a, a laptop, using a tablet, using a PDA, a smartphone, capture that information one time and upload it directly back to the back office system. Straight away, you start to reduce duplication of effort. I was speaking to one of our a social work director down in Nottinghamshire, who, who worked out that their social workers spent 35% of their day dealing with service um, with, the, uh, with, the care, with the people out in the community. The rest of the time was spent filling in bits of paper and driving to and from work. We now have 1,400 social workers in Nottinghamshire using um, our technology. And they've discovered that they can save over two hours, well, between one and two hours a day, which can be redistributed in, in, in dealing with their caseloads. Cost savings. Very simple ones, redu the re reduction of travel. You're not driving to and from, from the office each day to, to, or three times a day to collect your new work. You're using less paper, CO2, CO2 emissions. And a very useful one is a reduction on the reliance of subcontractors. I don't know in your building repairs or housing teams here, do you use subcontractors for gas servicing, electrical servicing, any of these business areas? Anyone? Yep. yep. Again, we did a project in Highland Council recently where they had, I think it was about 28% of their work was carried out in uh, responsive repairs using subcontractors. Straight away, they were able to get rid of that entire um, cost to them by being able to do more work internally. I'm going to get through some of these quite quickly. You know, what we're talking about is mobilizing your frontline staff. And what that means is providing them with the right information that they need to do their jobs more effectively. And it's got to be done on a device that is easy to use and intuitive to use. Fundamental question, well, the fundamental fact is there will be no transformation or change unless it's adopted by those workforce. And if it's not easy to use, they're not going to adopt, they're not going to adopt it. But uh, I don't know if you know uh, Clancy Dockra. Anybody heard of Clancy Dockra? Yep. They drive around digging up big holes in the middle of the streets and then fix it and so to allow people to go in and fix the, the, the utilities. They thought they'd try mobile working. And they provided everybody with a, a nice big laptop, uh, a 3G connection card, and sent them out in the rain and said, right, let's try and get access to your back office system. The operations director was really excited. He put, put all these devices out in the field. The next morning, he wanted to come in and see how it had gone, the first trial. It didn't take him long to find out how it had gone. He got into the work, and there was one of his lovely power, uh, it was a Panasonic Toughbook, uh, and it had a, a, a what are they called, a, 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 a nail gun through the front of, through, through, through the hole of the PC to his, to, and to his door. And that was the feedback they'd got. It's the, wrong, it's the wrong way of working. You've got to think of these people. The, the system has to work offline. They've got to be able to get the right information they, they need in, 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 the, in the time that they need it. So it's really important to involve the people that, that you're, you're providing these solutions for so you can get the right solution for them. Once you've mobilized people, you can start to analyze lots of information. You're beginning to catch a really strong data about where people are um, and what they're doing and how long they spent doing this work. Once you're starting to you capture these GPS coordinates, timestamps, you can start to do some really clever stuff about analyzing how much time is really spent doing their work. From there, you can start to optimize the workforce, start to look at scheduling, making sure that the right people are in the right place and doing the right work. I'm going to have to speed up. To <laughs> That's... Uh, Complex looking slide, but in essence, this is something we can talk about I mean, over at the, uh, the desk a bit later. But the system has to work offline, has to work natively, it has to work across all the different operating systems, has to be able to give people the opportunity to capture the information they need, feed it back to all the back office systems that, 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 that they're based within your local authority. The important thing to focus on really is don't worry about the back office system, worry about the person out in the field. Make sure that they are getting the right information that they need. 
We've discussed Fife a few times today. Fife, um, a, a very large user of our mobile working technology. Across 350 building operatives, they're saving over 2.8 million pounds per year. They're just starting to roll out 900 uh, home care staff who deal with over 100,000 visits a month. They're anticipating saving four million pounds annually off the back of this technology. Highland Council, I mentioned, again, they reduced their, their uh, reliance on subcontractors, improved the number of jobs they're doing each week. Get through the Virgin Care. Some of these are astonishing, the figures here, that, that sort of 30% increase in face-to-face -face time with their patients just by having the reduction of, of the admin that was required there. Um, I think this is a very, I know we're running out of time, but this is a very important quote here. I thought it was very revealing, really, that from one of the, the uh, clinical people within Virgin Healthcare that worked in the community for nursing for almost 15 years and hadn't come across a solution that had significantly changed the way they were able to deliver the service. Mobile working can do that. The power of uh, mobile working really can have bottom line benefits. Finally, Bristol Community Health Service. What happens? Ah. They did a pilot um, of using mobile working uh, for, their, for their community based nurses. Pre pilot, only 40% of their team thought they were able to evidence that the care plans were being collected and stored in an efficient manner. Post pilot, that was up to 85%. Um, and again, I'm running out of time. We don't have much time here today, but I really would appreciate if you are interested in this type of working. Do come and talk to me about some of these uh, uh, examples and case studies and some of the real projects that we're doing here in Scotland. Return on investment, very important. Aberdeen City saving over £1.5 million annually just through 200 field-based workers. Right, well, 